Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com and this is another video on design patterns. And in the previous videos I talked about what was called creational design patterns. So this is like factory and prototype and singleton. And the idea behind all these patterns is creating. You're creating an object. Okay, so basically a prototype, you create a object by cloning it. In a factory you have a function or a class that's responsible for building more objects or um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to start talking about structural um, design patterns. And the idea behind structural design patterns, you're not necessarily creating new objects, but you're helping objects that already exist work together. Um, so these are kind of in-betweens between other objects. So that way um, they work together better. So let's imagine a scenario where, and first we'll just get this conceptually, and then we'll just kind of do like a, a, a mini kind of code piece. So let's say there are several different universal remotes, okay? So there is universal remote one, two, and three. They all work differently. Then there are different types of televisions. And they all work differently. So it's television one, two, and three. But generally the way it should work is I should be able to use any re universal remote with any television. Okay, there's gotta be something that kind of allows that to happen, sort of, that allows me to kind of mix and match these things. And that's going to be sort of our bridge object. Okay, this is called the bridge pattern. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an object that would take, you know, a remote and a television and matches them up together so that way they can work together. Okay, um, so when you think of a bridge, it allows two things that are separate to work together. Okay, it connects them. Okay, so this would be and I'm not, we're not going to create full on classes right now. So we're just going to pretend that they exist. It would be kind of like me saying, Hey, you know, uh, basically r my remote equals a new universal remote. So we're just pretending there's a universal remote class. Okay. And then my TV equals a new TV. You just pretend there's a TV class. Okay, and then basically we we have a class that connect the two called uh you know uh pair so you're pairing your TV and your remote and we'll call this new pair device it's a pair device object and what it does it takes my remote and my TV and now going forward I'm able to use the functions of my remote. So I'll be able to like do my remote dot, let's say change channel. So this may be a function that's built into my remote um, that changes the channel. And now when I use that function, if I go to my TV and see what channel is on, it'll have the channel that I specified. That's, it'll now allows them to use their, affect each other's properties because this pair device figures out how to make that connection okay so this could be this could be two completely uh, from a programming standpoint these could be two objects two things that were like these are two separate libraries okay so let's pretend that like there's a library I created um, with certain objects and classes and then there's another library with certain objects and classes and they weren't designed to necessarily work together but now I've created this pair device thing that allows them to work together that is the adapter approach. You're creating an object to allow other objects to work together in ways that they weren't necessarily originally designed to do. Okay, but this is kind of a good sort of illustration of the concept. Okay. Now there is builder, I mean bridge, which is what we just illustrated, that allows two things to work together. Then there's an adapter that allows things that weren't meant to work together to work together. Um, and this, it's a slight difference in the sense that the analogy I'll use here is imagine like if you've ever traveled across uh, to another nation, sometimes you'll notice like the outlets are different. So we'll just say, hey, you know, um, here we have, basically we have my tool, um, which whose outlet, okay, equals a US, plug okay so this is like a US style three prong outlet you know plug type thing 
Okay, and problem is I'm in a hotel, so hotel room, and my hotel room's outlet is a European style, so we'll say Euro plug. Okay. So we'll make these kind of classes. So let's do this. New. New. And the thing is that these aren't made to, actually we'll call this Euro outlet, because it's not a plug, it's the outlet. So plugs are supposed to plug into outlets, but a US plug is supposed to plug into a US outlet, and a Euro outlet is supposed to be plugged in with a Euro plug. So then maybe I create some so in order to kind of deal with this issue, I create like an adapter class. Okay, and then basically with my adapter class, so let's say new class um, adapter. And what this class does, it, uh, constructor, it takes in a plug and an outlet. Okay. And then what it does, it'll create, uh, what's the way I want to say this? Okay, so this adapter will have, a f if you've ever seen like in how adapters work, the, the part with the prongs is called the male end, and the actual part where you stick the prongs in is called the female end. So we'll say the female end, so this will just kind of identify what the outlets are, and I'm not gonna sit there and design all this logic right now, but we'll say, hey, you know, uh, this dot female equals US outlet. So basically it has a, a US female end for me to plug uh, the US plug into. And then it has another end that's male, so this dot male end, that is a Euro plug. Okay, so now I'm able to plug in the Euro plug piece into the Euro outlet and plug in my US plug into the U to into the US outlet that's part of this adapter. Okay, it's literally like how the logic behind a real world outlet adapter. But this class acts as that in between. So, okay, so it's not that I'm like giving new functionality between the two. So unlike bridge, it just says, okay, here, here these things are gonna work together. What this does is that these things can't work together and the adapter does the things that need to happen on both ends to make them work together. And that's what, and it sounds very similar, and which is why I'm doing them in the same video. But that's the kind of the concept behind these sort of two uh, types of design patterns. Okay, so again, struct bridge and adapter. I mean, they're trying to make two things that something that doesn't naturally work together work together, or I'm trying to create to create a new sort of relationship between two objects that didn't have a relationship before by creating a sort of in between object that leverages both their functionality. But either way, you have that in-between object uh, that interacts, be that basically leverages the properties and methods of both of the external objects. That's the idea here. And that's why they're called structural design patterns because they're, they're all about how other objects work together. Cool, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'll talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.